Thank you, Chairwoman Whitmer and Chair Anthony. So glad to be with all of you today and very happy to have my budget director next to me. She is delivering the budget today, but delivered a baby three weeks ago. <laughs> and so she is, she is here with us and um, awfully glad to be here with all of you. I'm excited to present my executive budget proposal that will keep our progress moving forward. As I said in my state of the state, we have a heck of a record. So let's build on it by enacting another balanced, bipartisan, and fiscally responsible budget. My proposal today will deliver on the vision that I outlined a couple weeks ago, lowering costs, improving education, and ensuring that anyone and everyone can make it here in Michigan. Over the past year, our economy has been heading in the right direction. Unemployment remains low, our credit rating is strong, and we are a top 10 state for doing business. We got it done by collaborating on the kitchen table issues and effectively managing our finances. Since I took office, we have paid down over $18 billion of debt, and with this next budget can pay down $21 billion of debt, bringing that up more than either of the previous two administrations. We brought our rainy day fund to an all-time high of $2 billion, and we even established a new rainy day fund for schools, setting aside nearly a half a billion dollars for the future of our children's education. We did all of this without raising taxes by a dime. In fact, we delivered a billion dollars of tax relief. We've rolled back the retirement tax for 500,000 senior households, giving an average of $1,000 a year. We quintupled the working family's tax credit, putting an average combined refund of $3,150 in the pockets of 700,000 Michigan families. Michiganders are going to start seeing refund checks starting next week. Very exciting. Both tax breaks have huge impacts. More seniors can retire with dignity. Tens of thousands of families will be lifted out of poverty. And half the children in Michigan directly benefit from these changes. So I want to thank both chairs and every legislator who helped us get this done. This year, we want to build on our momentum. And I proposed several ideas in my State of the State two weeks ago. I know a lot of people watched the speech and rightfully asked, how the heck are we going to pay for this stuff while balancing the budget? Well, let me tell you, over the last few years, we have paid down certain debt from MIPSERS, our retirement program for our educators. We've been able to pay it down early. It's kind of like paying off your mortgage early. So we've got dollars that we don't have to continue using toward that. So thanks to this prudent move, we have freed up an extra $670 million that we can use this year and hundreds of millions going forward. We can use these freed up resources to deliver for Michigan students today without shortchanging our retirees and maintaining our fiscal discipline. In fact, balanced budget proposes another deposit into our rainy day fund to bring it to an all-time high of $2.2 billion and would not raise taxes by a dime on our Michiganders. So let's dig in. First, I want to talk about costs. It is the top of mind challenge for Michiganders right now. It's hard to buy a house, afford a car, or save for retirement while keeping up with bills. No matter who you are or where you come from, if you work hard, you should be able to provide for your family and have a fair shot at a better future. Let's work together to make life more affordable by lowering costs on the biggest expenses in people's budgets. Expenses like housing, transportation, health care, education, utilities, and food. So first, let's talk about lowering the cost of housing. We know that this is a serious challenge, I guarantee, in every one of your districts. Statewide, we know that 50% of renters and 25% of homeowners spend more than 30% of their income on housing. In other words, rent is too damn high and there's just too damn little housing. The solution is building. Build, baby, build, as I said in my State of the State. In the next fiscal year, MISHA will use their existing loan dollars to 
and bond money to invest $1.4 billion to build or rehabilitate almost 10,000 homes. That's the largest investment to build housing in Michigan history. It's 10 times what we put into housing just 10 years ago. Thanks to MISHA's, MISHDA's effective financial management, they can build or refurbish 10,000 homes without a single dollar coming from this additional budget proposal. Getting this done will support thousands of good paying middle class jobs in the skilled trades, from pipe fitters to carpenters, bricklayers and roofers, but most importantly help people have more access to affordable housing. Over the last few years, we've been headed in the right direction on housing. Since I took office, we have invested double what we did in the previous eight years to build or rehabilitate 34,000 homes, supporting 20,000 construction jobs in the way. In this budget, we will support MISHDA's efforts by funding housing and community revitalization projects that make our small towns and big cities better places to live, work, and invest. So let's roll up our sleeves and continue this work together. Now I wanna talk about lowering the cost of healthcare. In tandem with the Biden-Harris administration, we've made strides to tackle the cost of prescription drugs and expand health coverage over the last few years. For the first time ever, Medicare can negotiate directly for lower drug prices, and the cost of insulin is capped at $35 a month for all. That's a big deal. A record number of Americans, 21 million, have signed up for coverage under the Affordable Care Act. Kids can stay on their parents' plan until they turn 26, and you can't be charged more for a pre-existing condition. I already proposed the Caring for My Family tax credit, which would save Michiganders who incur caregiving expenses with an aging or sick relative, saving them up to $5,000 on their taxes. This disproportionately benefits women, and especially women of color who bear the brunt of family caregiving responsibilities. In this budget, let's continue our commitment to lowering health care costs by ensuring that no one on Medicaid, adults or kids, are charged premiums. This includes maintaining zero dollar premiums for my child, which offers comprehensive coverage for insured Michiganders 19 and under at low cost. We can all agree that every child deserves access to health care, regardless of their ability to pay. Thanks to our work to eliminate premiums for my child, we're saving parents money and ensuring every Michigan child can get help when they're sick or hurt. Whether they need a checkup or dental services, vision support or mental health care, let's support our kids. Every parent we know wants their children to thrive in school and be set up for a brighter future. This year, let's deliver on what I'm referring to as the Michigan Guarantee. It's a simple idea, but it's got huge applications and implications for every child. Every child in Michigan deserves a high quality public education from pre-K through post-secondary. Thanks to the long-term MIPSERS debt we paid down early, We've secured over $600 million more to annually use for our children's education. In other words, we have the resources to invest in our people through the Michigan Guarantee. And it starts with pre-K. We know that kids who go, to three, who go to pre-K arrive at kindergarten better prepared to learn and go on to graduate at higher rates and earn more money. This is about setting up our youngest Michiganders for lifelong health and lifelong wealth. Last year, I proposed pre-K for all by the end of 2026. In this budget, I'm proposing we actually get it done two years earlier, ahead of schedule, and save parents $10,000 a year and give every child a solid academic foundation. In addition to pre-K for all, let's expand quality, affordable childcare. Child care is an essential bridge to education for kids with working parents. Moms and dads need to be able to go back to work with confidence knowing that their children are safe and cared for. In this budget, I am proposing free child care for child care workers 
so we can boost the rates of child care providers to increase slots and improve facilities. And leading by example as one of the state's largest employers by saving state of Michigan employees thousands on their child care expenses. Child care and pre-K are companion pieces to help young Michiganders thrive. To improve K-12 education, we will make another historic investment in our kids and in our schools. I'm proposing that we continue feeding our kids free breakfast and lunch at school, saving parents over $850 a year per student on grocery bills and valuable time running around in the morning trying to make sure their kids have something nutritious in their backpack. Every parent knows how stressful it is to get out the door on time in the morning. You're scrambling to find a missing glove or last night's homework while putting together a sandwich or stuffing carrots into a baggie. Knowing that your child will eat no matter what is a huge relief. And that's why in this budget we will leverage federal funding to feed students over the summer as well. This benefits 900,000 kids, and I'm proud that I believe we are, we are on the cusp of getting it done, because our students should never go hungry. Let's also raise per pupil funding to another record high. Keep the funding gap between schools closed and ensure students who need extra support can get it. Let's upgrade our campuses to grow the teaching profession to make our schools safer, better places to learn. And finally, let's continue funding school safety and mental health. When our students are unsafe or struggling or starving, it's impossible to learn. So let's manage progress on all of these fronts through this budget and let's get it done for our kids. Now I wanna talk about post-secondary education. We'll continue chasing our 60 by 30 goal to have 60% of working adults with a post-secondary education or skills training by 2030. When I took office, we were at 45%. As of last week, we're over 51%. We got here together by lowering the age of the bipartisan, bipartisan Michigan Reconnect program to 21 <clears throat> and offering hundreds of thousands of Michiganders a tuition-free associate's degree or skills training opportunity. We established the Michigan Achievement Scholarship, lowering the cost of community, private, or public university. We established, um, pardon me, in this budget, I'm proposing that we go farther. In this budget, I'm proposing that we offer every single high school graduate the chance to earn an associate's degree or skills training at a community college tuition free. This would be a transformational opportunity for our students, helping them save more than $4,000 a year and giving them a path to a better paying, high skill job in a career that they love. So together I'm proposing we realize and deliver the Michigan guarantee. Let's show employers that we have the workforce that they need to succeed. And let's show parents across the nation why they should come to the state of Michigan. We'll save you thousands on your child's education and help you build a great quality of life at a good cost of living. We've got your back to live the classic Michigan story. After you graduate with a degree or certificate, we want to make sure that you can land a good paying in demand job to sustain yourself and your family. And that's why this budget is proposing investments to help anyone and everyone make it here in Michigan. In my address two weeks ago, I laid out a suite of new economic development tools for our bipartisan toolkit. Let's get those done so that we can compete with other states and nations to bring supply chains home and create thousands of good paying jobs. As I mentioned in my speech, let's establish an innovation fund to invest in high growth startups that will create the future right here in Michigan. With it, we can launch hundreds of new scalable Michigan-based startups and create thousands of jobs. We can build an ecosystem for innovation here in Michigan. We'll also continue funding programs to power workforce development, things like going pro, talent action teams, and our new office for community and worker economic transition. 
We will win the future in advanced manufacturing without leaving any person or place behind. Our inclusive economic agenda supports rural economies too. This budget would boost funding for the Office of Rural Prosperity and create a new farm to family program that supports regenerative farming, agricultural supply chains, and Michigan-made produce and products. We'll also help small and disadvantaged businesses compete for state contracts and drive growth in underrepresented groups and regions. And of course, we're gonna keep fixing the dam roads, bridges, pipes, and everything in between. We've fixed over 20,000 lane miles and 1,400 bridges since I took office. This year will be the final year of the Rebuilding Michigan Plan. <clears throat> With the final $700 million bond, we'll keep fixing our most economically critical roads and bridges. To keep this momentum going, my budget proposes matching funds to draw down federal investments from President Biden's bipartisan infrastructure law and Inflation Reduction Act. If we make this, strate this strategic investment, we can bring home billions of our tax dollars back to Michigan. In total, this budget proposes nearly $400 million to improve local roads, highways, bridges, and a combined total of nearly $1.1 billion with the rebuilding Michigan bond. We must keep our foot on the accelerator to fix our infrastructure. From roads and bridges to pipes and chargers and transit, everyone benefits when we make these investments. We want to build all, in all kinds of communities, all kinds of infrastructure. If you want a backyard that backs up to the woods, go for it. If you want to live in a dense, walkable community with amenities, go for it. There's something here for everyone. No matter what kind of community you live in, you deserve to be safe as you go to work, drop your kids off at school, and run errands. This year, let's build on the $1.5 billion of bipartisan public safety investments that we've made since I took office. We know that this works. Right now, there are some Michiganders who feel unsafe in their communities. In this budget, we will help local and county governments hire, train, and retain more police officers, firefighters, and EMS. We'll graduate another class of MSP troopers and better secure our capital. We'll continue tackling the root causes of crime by funding proven community violence intervention programs to reduce shootings and save lives. And we'll expand our behavioral health capacity, expanding access to mental health services for Michiganders of all ages. I can see at least Representative Brabeck's really excited about that. <clears throat> Let's keep prioritizing public safety and build a safer, more just state for all. In 2024, let's keep focusing on the fundamentals, building housing, lowering people's costs, improving education, and fixing infrastructure. Let's protect and expand fundamental freedoms. Together, let's de deliver another balanced bipartisan budget and build a strong economy where anyone and everyone can make it. I thank you for your time today and just want to reiterate one last thing before I open it up for questions, and that is, as we are negotiating any piece of policy that has budget implications, I want to make sure that we continue to do that in the confines of this budget. As we have in the past and want to in the future, don't negotiate budgets all year, every year. Right now is the time for us to set Michigan's budget. We need to do this work together, and with that, I'm delivering my proposed recommendation for the budget and look forward to our conversations where we go from here. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Governor. And we do have a couple of questions. Uh, we'll kick it off with Representative O'Neill. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Governor, thank you for your leadership and your team. Uh, Governor, yesterday we had the delegation from Ontario in town, which always gets me to thinking outside of our own perspective of how we're doing in Michigan. And even though we keep hearing the economy is strong as it is, we know that, that many Michiganders continue to struggle. What else in the recommendation uh, that you can communicate that would help alleviate some of those burdens that our families face? Thank you for the question, Representative O'Neill. I appreciate that. And we'll just share with you, as we've talked many times, <clears throat> the twin North Stars of what the work that we've been doing is lowering people's costs and growing our economy. 
Um, we center our work around these two things and more people in Michigan can be successful now and for the long run. I'm very proud of the work that we were able to do together over the last 12 months in terms of delivering a billion dollars of tax relief for Michiganders. Uh, we are now going to see those policies coming to fruition now that we are beyond the, the signy die close and, and the beginning of um, these bills coming into effect. And I'm proud that Michiganders are going to see tax relief as they file their taxes and many will be getting um, money in the mail. And so I want to encourage Michiganders to keep their eye on their mail. But we also know that there's more good work to do here. When we uh, deliver free breakfast and lunch for children in Michigan, 1.4 million Michigan public school students, that saves that household an average of $850 per student that they have. That is real savings in the pockets of Michigan's families. When we deliver on universal pre-K for all, that's childcare costs that families don't have to incur to the tune of about $10,000 a year. By eliminating the financial barrier for Michigan students to be able to attend community college, that too is about $4,000 of savings annually. So there are a lot of different pieces in this budget that I would draw your attention to as we think about how do we help Michiganders get ahead and keep more of their dollars in their pockets. Um, and so I think that we are on the on the cusp of being able to really do more than, than we've gotten done in this last year, which I think was an enormous amount. And I'm excited about that prospect and eager to work with you and your colleagues if there are additional ways that we can both be fiscally prudent, keep our eye on, on Michigan's economic future, but also deliver additional savings for Michigan families. Thank you, Madam Governor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Welcome, Governor. Um, so many of us were ecstatic when during the state of the state you mentioned housing as one of the top priorities and uh, the folks in this room last year we made some pretty bold investments in housing uh, a mix of lie tech affordable housing missing middle uh, investments in our land banks how do you envision building upon what we've already done so that it addresses housing issues ranging from senior housing, uh, issues related to folks who are unhoused in our communities, including right here in Lansing. Just talk a little bit about how we're building upon the historic investments in housing from the previous budget. Absolutely, thank you, Chairwoman. Um, Anthony, this is, I think, something that, if you're traveling in Michigan and you're asking people in any community, what would make a big difference to you and your community? It's housing, housing, housing. Whether you are in Midland or Traverse City or in Downriver, I know that housing is top of mind and it's not unique to Michigan by any stretch. This is a national problem. In Michigan, over half our housing stock is over 50 years old. We know that different communities have different housing solutions, and that's why ensuring that we've got kind of the panoply of tools with which to work is so crucial for our success in this space. I want to acknowledge that our mission director, Amy Hovey, has been, I think, um, really, she and her team have been moving fast, and they've presented a $1.4 billion investment plan in housing. It is not one size fits all. I was fortunate to be in Benton Harbor a couple of weeks ago. Whirlpool has been a partner in the work that they're doing there, building um, a, a apartment housing with special rates for people who are in public service, their first responders. I was in northern Michigan at a project that the state did with Habitat for Humanity and met a family that, with two kids that finally um, was able to find a house and have a yard for their children. They moved out of, a, of an apartment where they were really cramped. This is a, a game-changing thing for Michigan families, and we know that this old housing stock um, and the, the dearth of housing stock is something that we've got to continue to chip away at. So $1.4 billion investment is going to be game-changing. It is 10 times what we were spending 10 years ago. I think that there will always be more good work to do in this space, but we're moving it fast and certainly the partnership with the legislature has been the foundation of why we've been able to get so much done and why we're on the cusp of doing so much more. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Representative Steckloff. 
Thank you, Chair Whitworth. Thank you, Governor Whitmer, Lieutenant Governor Gilchrist, and your entire team for being here this morning. As a huge supporter of my LEAP and the Michigan Achievement Scholarship, I'm excited to see us really focusing on pre-K and continuing education. As you said at the State of the State and along this morning, pre, uh, free education for pre-K as well as community college. Is there any way you more specifically you can walk us through how the state is able to afford to provide this? Absolutely, thank you, Representative Steckloff. I would, um, I think it's important to highlight the early paying down on MIPSERS. I think that this is something that is not just fiscally prudent, um, it is the ability to invest dollars that should be going into the um, skills attainment for our people, our youngest people, to graduates of high school to ensure that we're, we're successful in this space. And that's why, instead of just throwing the dollars into an account, we wanted to reinvest and make sure that those dollars are going right to the things that are going to improve outcomes for, for our people and improve lifelong health and lifelong wealth. And those investments from pre-K to community college and free meals and other things in the, in the continuum um, are, are really best practices and the best science-based way that we can ensure we're improving outcomes. But I'd like to invite the budget director or um, the, what, what is your title? Deputy budget, Deputy budget director. <laughs> you know, I don't get caught up on titles, so I don't know anyone's titles. I know that this is my director and deputy director um, to, to share anything in addition, if you'd like. 